So I just recorded the game here with this. Um, and of course, when I was recording the second game that I was going to do, um, it crashed and my save is now gone. The game has crashed multiple times on me already. The last time was in the Road to the Show episode. Um, but you can see here what kind of happened. Uh, we went 7 and a third with Flores. He had a great outing. And uh, instead of just playing this second game here, um, I'm actually going to advance a day. And then I'm going to just quick manage this game here. I'm hoping we still lost this game. We did. All right. Um, good thing I checked that. But uh, instead of playing it, I'm just going to quick manage it. And I'll live stream it. Or uh, live comment. That's probably why I did a regional theme. Uh, I've been hearing that regional theme's not the move. So I've been trying to stay away. Uh, at the time of the crash, Jackson Job was about six and a third through, allowing one run. Had like four or five strikeouts and some hits allowed. This is a righty heavy team. Oh my. I did not know that. So I'm hoping he can kind of keep it up. He only allowed one walk. Um, and just so you guys know, I'm not really paying attention to us hitting. I'm more concerned about pitching because Jackson Job is our, um, our top prospect. So I want to see how he's doing. And he allows a run here, but he gets out of the inning, only allowing one, which sounds about right. Uh, he did have four runs of insurance last time, which kind of sucks because now we don't have that here. But Jackson Job. Uh, he has five pitches, basically the same five pitches as um, like an, Wilmer Flores does, um, or very similar. I don't know if they have the same. I feel like once a runner gets on, I'll uh, take him out, but he gets through seven. And you get an RBI double, so now we have a lead. Let's see if I can... All right, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take him out. Seven innings. Good work. He got four strikeouts at 1290 RA. This was his first appearance of the year. Uh, so that was all in this game. I am going to go to this guy here. Walks the first batter. Pop out. Strikeout. Fielder's choice. All right, so we get out of the game. Now we'll go for the win here. We're going to bring upon our closer, Zabala. And we get out of the game. So we ended up winning here. Jackson Job, one player of the game. He had about seven innings pitched. One third less than, um, what's his face over there? He had four strikeouts, two walks, one earned run, one run allowed, and six hits allowed. So if we want to compare that, as he is our top prospect, he's the one I care about. Um, he probably won't be the first call-up. I honestly don't think he'd be the second call-up. The first call-up due to like injury or bad play is going to be Michael Lorenzen. Um, the other guys that are in single A, they could be called up, but they're currently hurt. That's why they're in single A. Guys like Tyler Skubal and uh, Casey Mize. If you see someone in single A that should be in the MLB, it's because they're hurt. And I'm just, they, I can't make a manual injury. I don't know how. So I'm doing it that way. But uh, you can see here, Jackson Jove, six hits, one run, one earned run, two walks, four strikeouts. Um, and we'll go over here. And we'll check out Wilmer Flores. Six hits, one earned run, one run allowed, one walk, three strikeouts. The future is looking bright here between these two. They both felt really good in game. Um, my plan was when the gameplay was going on in the background to kind of go more in depth with these guys. Um, of course, the game crashed, so I couldn't do that. So I'm kind of live comming it here, and if the live com doesn't work, I'm going to be very upset. Um, I am going to simulate a bit because I want to get through the season faster. But I will probably... I'll probably sim up to the Guardian series here, as they're kind of our division rivals. He will have to be out for a few days. That's double A. I don't care about double A injuries. Uh, Jacob Junis scope has a 12 game now. Um, it's also a double A. It's okay. Today it's a scouting assignment, so we'll do the scouting assignments, and then we'll get probably 
I think what I'm going to do is for this one, I'm going to let the CPU play out a game, record it, and then I'll just kind of put the highlights together. I haven't done this before. I heard Mr. Hurricane had that idea, and that's kind of an idea I like, so I'm going to adopt it. I'm not sure who I'm going to go with yet, but let me go to the scouting. Actually, let me... Is this telling me the same thing? Why is this telling me this? I don't care. I, I like you told me this already. I know. And I'm sure people wanted me to get the scout, like new scouts. I'm just going to roll with this. Oh, here we go. We finished one. So closing pitcher with an 81 to 93 potential. That's good. His hits per nine in the future could be amazing. His strikeout per nine, same deal. Home runs per nine has potential. This is a good sign. Uh, he's the one that's projected to go with our pick. Um, but this was the other one that I was looking at. He throws left. Oh, actually, this was the one that's projected to go. He's projected to go right after. This is the one that's projected to go with our pick. And he looks just as good. His hits per nine is a little lower, but his strikeouts and walks per nine are higher. Um, I will scout him. But what I will do is I'll make him our third I'll keep Ricky Means as our second, and I will change this prospect here. What is this scout good at? Uh, he is position players and pitchers. He has better efficiency. So I don't want to go number one overall because I don't think the number one or two will fall to us. Um, but I do want to go pit or uh, position player here. I'm actually going to do Frankie Reyes. I said Frankie, but I meant Frank. Um, I'm going to actually look a little bit later because I just realized we also have the 36 pick and I have not scouted anyone down here. Um, so I want to see if there's a later prospect that I might want. I don't really need a center fielder down here. Right fielder, Kevin Doby. He has good, he's, has potential to have a good future in contact hitting. Not so much power. And he looks like he's going to have blazing speed. So that's potentially a good one. Uh, we got second baseman and we got a catcher here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take a look at this catcher here. Because um, he potentially has good. I want to see how it does. Let's do that. We'll do another week of Copal's. Just to get that 100% scouting progress. And we will make sure Ricky also gets 100%. Uh, Ricky is projected to go 6. I don't think we'll get him. So let's do that. That should be good. Let's just finish that out. If I'm doing this wrong, y'all will let me know. Let me simulate this game here. Tie game. Walk it off. No. Giants win 7-1. to one. Wasn't it just a tie game? What happened? They scored 6 runs in the 12th inning. What happened? Alexander allowed five runs. Four of them earned. My God. What? My, what? All right. Um, but the game I'm going to leave on, because I am going to end up leaving one on, is probably going to be the game against Zach Plesak, because I want to face the better of the... I, Cal's been doing very good. But uh, we already, I think we already seen a game of Spencer Turnbull. That would be this game up here. So, I'm going to do this one. Oh, wait. No, we didn't because I had to restart my file. So, I guess we didn't. Um, we're still going to check out Matt Manning first. Scope has a 13-game hit streak. I wonder if he continued it. Uh, no, he did not. All right. So, the hit streak is over. Uh, we lose 2-3. to three. See everything here. Meadows, Rogers, Creedler is getting another home run. I don't know how he's hitting home runs. Yeah, you're good. Uh, ooh, the Mariners offer us the first trade offer of the year. Diego Castillo for Jose. Um, I don't think I'm gonna accept this. Diego Castillo is nice. He's a good fast thrower. Um, but. Maybe. It just doesn't really make sense to get a downgrade there if I'm the Mariners. So I'm going to decline that for the sake of them. Uh, we're going to simulate game two. Class A is trying to close. Uh, he probably would have anyway. And we lose this one two to one. You can see 
Class A got... Class A did not get the save. Karen check got the save. Uh, Baez, I don't know why they reorganize my lineup every game. But whatever. Looks like uh, Creedler drew a walk. No, he just did not get many opportunities because he got pitched it for by Badoo. Um, Baez had a fucking... Okay. Uh, a good game there from Erod, though. Seven and a third, two hits allowed, one walk, six Ks. Uh, Foley ended up allowing a run when he came in, though. And then Vest had to close it out, allowing... Well, he didn't allow another run, but... Or didn't allow an earned run, I should say. All right, but yeah, we're going to get into this. And hopefully it does not crash on me. Comerica Park is the site of the game today as the 3-14 Detroit Tigers host the 14-4 Cleveland Guardians. Pitching on the mound today is Matt Manning who had a decent first three starts. I mean still a 4 ERA which is not that great. But he would proceed to throw a pretty nice game here today. See the first inning here he starts off with a fly out on Andre y Jimenez. Jimenez. I don't know why I always struggle with saying his name. Far out number one. And you'll notice throughout this game that I let the CPU just play each other. I was not in the room when this game was going down until about the seventh inning. And uh, at that time, I started doing something else anyway, so I still wasn't paying attention. So this is just CPU or CPU gameplay. I, I just wanted to get some more content out for you guys, so I thought this was a good way to do it. But to start off, you see Matt Manning works three pretty strong innings. And now we go to the bottom half of the first, where it's Aaron Saval on the mound first four games he's had a pretty nice start and he would look to continue to do that in this game and his first batter he would face would end up being Jonathan Scope here in a 2-2 count and Scope waves at a cutter away for out number one we then go to the later on in the inning where Miguel Cabrera would fly out and both pitchers work a solid first inning here to keep their decent years going on as they hope here at Comerica Park we then get into a little trouble with Matt Manning with a 3-2 one-out situation in the top half of the second, but a ground ball 6-4-3 double play would get him out of the inning here, and two good innings there for Matt Manning and the Detroit Tigers defense. On the other end of the spectrum here is Saval looking to work his second inning with a runner on and a 3-2 count. Pitch hangs over the middle, and Spencer Torkelson did not miss it. A two-run shot to the bullpen there is... I don't know what number home run of the year. His second home run of the year goes nearly 400 feet, and he gives the Tigers the lead here early in the second inning. Later on in the inning, two runners on. Jonathan Scope has a chance to do some more damage, but he pops out to foul territory where Bo Naylor would make the catch. But still a good start here for the Tigers, who are struggling this year at 3-14. and 14. They need something here, as there's not many fans in the stadium. Well, I guess it's a little bit more packed than I thought, but Matt Manning continued his jam going through the third as he quickly gets this inning over with, and he would continue this process into the fourth two as two outs on Josh Bell in a 2-0 count. He would cause a fly out to right field right where Austin Meadows is to work four very solid innings so far in this game, but we need him to do at least five, and that's what we were going to get here with two runners on and two outs, it's Bo Naylor here. And Matt Manning stays in. He does hang a curveball, but he causes a pop-up in the foul territory where Matt... I think that's Nick Mayton or Maton. He runs over and makes the catch. Five scoreless innings here for Matt Manning. On the other end, Saval pitched pretty good, but he got taken out by Pilkington and Jonathan Scope. His first at-bat against Pilkington, he drives it in the left field for his sixth home run of the season and to extend the lead to three to nothing. Our best power bat right there, that is Jonathan Scope, showing off why he's the best hitter on the team. Go to the next half here, it is Matt Manning continuing his gem here as he strikes out Jose Ramirez looking to end the sixth inning. And he would carry that momentum on to the seventh here as it is bases loaded, one down. Huge jam right now with George Valera up and he would cause Valera to pop up in the shallow left field. I forget who's playing. I think it's Vierling. I don't, I don't remember who was playing right field or left field in this game. But not deep enough to tag up. And then Bo Naylor in an 0-1 count would proceed to ground out to third. Get a fielder's choice there and end the inning as it's seven strong innings here for Manning. He would go on to the eighth, but beforehand, Pil Pink 
Pilkington. I still don't know his name. He would allow another bomb here to Jonathan Scope. A runner was on first. I don't remember who it was, but it's a two-run shot here for Jonathan Scope as he hits not only his second home run of the day and his seventh home run of the season, he extends it to a 5-0 lead here. And then Matt Manning would come out here and close down the eighth inning as he gets closer to a complete game shutout. He, after this inning, though, would not get the complete game shutout. He would be taken out here for, I think it was Garrett Hill. I don't remember, so I'm going to wait a second before I confirm that. And it was Garrett Hill who was struggling on the year. We were kind of hoping that he would get out of this jam and kind of pick up his season. But with two on and one out, Ahmed Rosario would hit a base hit in the right field. Austin Meadows, if he had an accurate throw here, I think he would have got whoever that was rounding third going into home. But it's 5-1 to one now, and then we didn't mess around. We put Alex Lang in, our closer, 2-2 two for two on closing opportunities. Pitched four innings. Right-handers are hitting pretty well off him. I didn't realize that. But with the bases loaded and two outs, he would proceed to hit a ground ball to Jimenez. And the Tigers would win their fourth game of the year at a score of 5-1. to one. I don't know if Scope won player of the game or Manning, but I definitely think Manning deserves it more as he was dominant here for eight strong innings. Lang got to his third save of the year. We did lose the series two games to one, but we didn't get swept, and during this rough year, you're going to see a lot of losses anyway. Jonathan Scope had two home runs. He does win player of the game as Matt Manning allows three hits, three walks, no runs, and four Ks on eight innings pitched. You can see the loss goes to Aaron Saval, who only pitched three and two-thirds inning. Uh, it's Scope and uh, T Torkelson are the uh, two responsible for the scoring today. No one else got a many thing, many things going on today. And then we jump over here. I continue to simulate some more as we bring up to our next scouting. You can see a double A update. We lose four nothing here to the Baltimore Orioles, who are off to a hot start, just like they are in real life. They're off to a pretty good start. Um, you can kind of see our stats there. Um, I quickly go through these stats. I never realize how much time I actually take to go over them. So someday I won't do this <laughs> so fast. But I brought us up to Sunday. That way we can do our next scouting assignment. And you can see we win game two here. Uh, I score 8-2 to two where Scope, Haas, and Torkelson all had home runs. Looked like Haas had a grand slam or something because he had five RBI. So maybe, I don't know what he did this game, but he had five RBI game. That's pretty good. Um... And then you can also see here the Orioles stats. But mainly I just simmed up to this day so I could do the scouting. And once again, if you guys did not see the last one, I kind of messed up the scouting. I didn't really know what I was doing the first go around. Um, so I fixed it up for the second go around. Um, so you can see here, this is what I was looking at the previous week. Um, Ricky Means, a shortstop that I was intrigued by. Uh, G Giuseppe Knowles. A good closer who is 70 to 80 overall and an 82 to 92 potential. That could be a decent guy. And then Steve Gonzalez here who is a catcher. But none of these guys had great potential um, compared to other guys that could have great potential. But that's what I was scouting at this moment in time. And then you'll see a jump cut here in just a second to who I am scouting for this current week. Which again at the time I was doing it all wrong or differently than how I would now. Um, so now I'm doing Nigel Padgett. Uh, John Witt, and I didn't even see who the third one was, to be honest. Um, but the main thing about this next game here is, well, we get the save here with Lang as we win the series, I believe, with Baltimore, which is huge for us because they are pretty good this year. But what you'll see um, is that Ma Michael Lorenzen is actually going to come back for the next episode. Um, so that's why I stopped right away on this Brewers game. Because I didn't really know exactly who or when his timeline is. So I brought him back later May. You can see our hitters here. Our top hitter is Eric Haas and Jonathan Scope who's killing it right now. With a 355 average and an 1117 OPS. Uh, you can see most of our other guys though. I mean 200 to 250 is kind of the range um, batting average wise. The OPS on some guys aren't even that high. I mean we're sitting here with what, Akil Badu not doing good. Um, Matthew Boyd is actually our best pitcher, even though Matt Manning threw a gem last game. Um, they're pretty much our one-two right now. Spencer Turnbell has not been doing well. Same with Joey Wentz. Erod's been doing horrible. 
Uh, Garrett Hill and Jason Foley have been really our worst pitchers. Will Vest as well out of the pen. Um, but some decency there. But you can see with Michael Lorenzen coming up, he's back from his quote-unquote injury that he would have, would have had in real life. So with the struggling Erod, I ended up sending him down to AAA. Hopefully he can turn it around. And I would call out Michael Lorenzen, who would slot right in and play the next game. I gave him some time in AAA since I think he was supposed to be back middle of the month. But I couldn't remember. So I gave him time in AAA, and now he will be back for the next episode. Guys, thank you all for watching this episode. And tune in next time to see Michael Lorenzen and the Tigers as he makes his season debut. Guys, thank you all for watching. And until next time, talk to you all later. I am out. Peace.